So here we are. This got cut off. But we won't call this part two. Uh, here we are mid June 16th or whatever. Saturday. 15th. <sighs> Still nothing at Sagittarius A at Galaxy Center. That snack bar at Galaxy Center. Yes. Uh, original estimates had uh, indicated probably uh, sometime in June. <clears throat> it would start gulping hideous amounts of that four Earth mass gas cloud. <clears throat> Which now, despite we, we still can't see in it, of course, not from here with what we don't have working. Um, yeah, it, it, just just by the way it's unfolding and, and the, the orbit, or deorbit, I guess we should say, into Sagittarius A, and that's uh, Gas Cloud 2, CG2, I think that's the, the popular local nomenclature. Oh, here's some nice ones. We'll give you some flowers. Yeah, um, I picked it up on Dr. Paul the Violet's, uh, s I think it was on a, a Starburst uh, page, Collect the Corburst, Starburst Foundation page. I'll put it in more information there. I haven't found his YouTube channel, I don't think he has one. So, along the short, instead of it being a big fluffy cloud like this, getting sucked into Cindy's nostrils, we'll pretend Cindy's nostrils is the Sagittarius A, the black hole. Uh, instead, in that cloud, it looks like... <clears throat> Oops. Okay, there's one. And let's get a dwarf. In that twisted cloud, of course, I can't actually make it twist. Uh, I've got to steal one of your, one of your flowers here, okay? No, that's not red enough. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it looks like there's a binary star system inside the CG2, right? This tumbleweed here, this white shit is CG2. So, something like, oop, drop my red dwarf. Yeah, okay, so something like this. Uh, yeah, that would be about right. By my guess. You can make guesses on things, because if nobody can see them, they can't prove you wrongly, so. <laughs> you guys know how it goes. It is YouTube um, who's paying me to, to do the expensive research and experiments. Telescope time is expensive. Okay, so we'll pretend that's a uh, a blue giant or a uh, magnet star. Okay, and then we have way over here. Actually, see. The, okay, so there's our red dwarf. So what we have is a binary star. <coughs> this magnet star. Pardon me. Uh, no. Uh, Hmm. Has uh, all this mass got pulled off of the white dwarf? Okay, and red dwarf. I think yeah, that's what he was. The calculations were suggesting on the new updated trajectories, cumulating up to uh, end of April. I think that's when it was. The last release was we. Figured and sent out. Okay, and Cindy, bring, bring the black Sagittarius A, the central black hole here. Okay, breathe in. <laughs> okay, sorry, I just took a demo. I'm just joking. You don't have to breathe in snow flowers. It's okay, monkey. Thanks. Okay, so yeah, that's just perfect. Hey, you see how uh, Sagittarius A is going by in its little wobble? And um, CG2, the big gas cloud. Okay, well, so it turns out by the calculations they figure that the smaller mass of this, uh, of this um, thought to be binary star, 
So all the most of the gas doesn't there is no not a whole lot of gas to rip off on a uh, on a red dwarf. No huge chronosphere, which is what this blue cloud is, right? That's hydrogen, helium, mainly from this one here that's now sucked down to a white dwarf. Okay, so. <sighs> We'll pretend to be the red dwarf, and this is 26,000 years ago. Poof! There we go. Okay, that's out through the. Oh, what do you call it? <clears throat> the disc that goes out the equator of the galaxy, and then of course you got your. GBR, your ground gamma ray burst. That goes out the top and the bottom. And it goes out gravitational weight component goes out slightly ahead of the light wave. Now the gamma X-ray whatnot. With particle pulses behind and that goes in four sweeps, just like the hoppies and others say. So the disc goes out. PR stop. Your Earth, your, your uh, souls, the star system. So the wave goes out and it passed there. Okay, now there's a magnetic field change. Now, bears just had to absorb all that. That shit going out on the accretion disk, all the hot <coughs> energized plasma and energies. The dark matter, the gravitational wave, we'll say, that comes out ahead. Because it, it goes doesn't bounce around like photons or protons or accelerated neutrons or any of it, right? <clears throat> it just goes and it pushes everything out of it. So that got, gets the bear first. Okay, now we're talking, um, if their, their guesstimates on, on the new calculations are, uh, say, in early 2014, so, you know, January, February, March. Perhaps, I mean, there's still a lot of uh, leave, doubt in the calculations, but granted, it does this from time to time. Uh, you know, all you have to do is read dice core samples and do radiology on it. Okay, now this accretion disk is out, and the spikes go out the axes, right? The galactic core, whoosh, whoosh. if you happen to be in line at it, its focused energy here. Your toast, but the odds of that are very low. But the odds, of, if we, especially you know, depending where you are to the galactic plane, uh, you know, where Bear's head is, mine is, and the ground is the plane. Uh, obviously, I'm higher. I'm further out of it <coughs> because we go on a sine wave, right? Every 26 million years, roughly. So you know, eventually, my head's going to be below Bear. Uh, quite a distance, you know, like um, 17 million light years before it gets sucked back down. And that's how we travel in the the disk of the galaxy. <clears throat> okay, so as the spike goes up, you get another change in magnetic ambience outside of the accretion disk. Okay, and that can do a bunch of stuff, so that's the second wave. And then you get the uh, the spike collapsing. So, again, the polarity around that spike going out of the center of the galaxy, which affects all the way out as far as it can, <clears throat> until there's too much of a vacuum that it doesn't connect at any level, electrically, magnetically, matterly. So it collapses, you get a small spike. And then the accretion disk collapses in again after all this is over and all that material is upset and pushed out and all the stars in it are affected whether they're fed more or creator's milk or <clears throat> or like what happens in a stellar nursery when a supernova type 1a goes off and they get sparked with the energy and you know excited with the matter that blows in but first the energy sparks off nuclear explosions, it breeds them, really. 
It gives that a little extra energy boost to get critical mass going. Like putting U-235 in with your U-238 in your fission reactor. That free uh, neutron bombardment sparks off more chain reaction. And if you get it dense enough, you get, well, critical mass, right? Explosion time. Okay, so there you go. So stage three is that central access energy spike collapses. And then everything in the uh, galactic bubble, the galactosphere, collapses again. It doesn't really collapse, but it changes back, right? Uh... It, the charge differential <coughs> seeks to even out, always all energy does, whether it's heat or... <sighs> and now the accretion disk snaps back and it passes both me and Bear by again and so we go through another change and all, all along it's upsetting everything along the way, each, each kind of energy is that changes on this wave and it spreads out you know like a ripple in a pond so you upset absolutely everything you learn know, everything cometary upset you bet um, if there's a uh, supernova remnants nearby that are relatively fresh and still charged up plasma wise and they're at the edge of a uh, heliosphere this is regnum rock time now we spoke of this before well then it can all of a sudden if there's enough energy pushing it in these uh, galactic core bursts and recollapse sequence, it can pull that shit in right through the magnetic the magnetosphere at the edge of the solar system, the interstellar boundary, whatever you want to call it. Well, you know, and the beryllium 10. The iron 60, all these uh, trace indicators, you know, they show this reoccurrence of major change. And of course, when it changes, depending what, how much and when and where it affects a planet like Earth, well, you know, causes changes to the atmosphere big time. Can shut the uh, atmosphere right off, even. Collapse ozone layers. I um, have read a bit of his stuff. Not all of it. He's got stuff that he sells to try and fund himself, of course. He's a professor, an astrophysicist. Um, I, I found the what I have read of his stuff, great. Of his astrophysics. And his helio You know, as history has shown out, many of his theses have borne out. So, which is, you know, just because somebody gets right a hundred times, it doesn't mean they will the hundred and first time. But, um, well, it's just worth looking at more research. I'm, I'm sure we'll be hearing about the results that this is based on, that it now looks like, like, a binary star system in that CG2 at the galactic center. And um, I'm sure we'll start hearing more about it. I'm sure they'll be looking real hard at what went on 26,000 years ago or so, because, you know, it's way the fuck out there. Well, yeah, out there, but. Before where it was 300 to 450 AU astronomical units, that's distance between Earth and Sun. So what, 96 million miles or something like that, kilometers? Yeah, that's enough. Um, so. You know, 350 of those, that's a long way. Well, that was the gas cloud, and they thought some of it was going to go in then. But no big deal, because the whole gas cloud was, you know, guesstimated to be like... I'm telling you, message lizard. 
<coughs> it was told to be way out there. Well, now they're saying, oh well, it could be uh, could be 130 with the new calculations, which explains you know the everything changed. And that's why it's not here now, and will be probably in six months or so. Because it's a whole greater mass than they thought, and the orbit was different. Which is what they're basing this whole hypothesis on. Now, Yeah, so, it's way more mass, and... And it's not a safe distance away at its closest approach to the uh, theoretical black hole at the galactic center. Well, there's no theory about it, it is a mass. Is it gravitationally critical? Well, I would think so. I, I, I think it's like that at the center of every galaxy pretty well unless it's passed through another and got robbed like mine did my Sagittarius a dwarf galaxy that my earth came from this one that we're standing on I assume you are standing on the same one caught and stuck on the 14th buck to 14th orbit and what's now considered stable orbit in this Sagittarius A galaxy. Well, so there you go. There's your Ragnarok, perhaps. Quite a difference in mass and the likelihood that it will get trapped in the event horizon of the, uh, or whatever you want to call it, at the galactic center, the gravitational influence of Sagittarius A, of our galactic center, whatever the fuck is there. Well, there's lots of stars there, really big fucking huge thing of stars. Probably a lot of black holes. That's where the black hole for Sagittarius Dwarf Galaxy went 3,000 years ago. Well, plus 26,000 years, you know. <laughs> <clears throat> that distance to the center thing. So I'm speaking from my Earth's perspective, time perspective. Uh, and then that's when all the problems, problems start happening. You know, all kinds of instability. Oh, it sounds like somebody's spraying poisons on their crops. <sighs> Gassing everyone. Okay, let's go inside, guys. Oh, uh, well, I've got to go. Catch you later. I'll uh, do the graphics on another part. Inside, guys. <sighs> yeah, you. It used to be great here before I knew there was uranium. <laughs> Big time uranium. Wow. Come well, on, guys. We gotta go in. Wow. Yeah. Because <sighs> all the fields were just wheat. But I wouldn't want to be breathing in sprinkle layered. It was rye uh, for feeding his horses and cows. But now that we had that earthquake problem and we got uranium in the well, I, uh, there you go. No, gotta go in. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm not sprinkle using water sprinklers on my own yard. Ah! Here we go. Oh, 
everything's closed down. I was doing all kinds of grass out there for uh, doing experiments. A mining project, an old, old mining project. But you have to you know, be able to stabilize things before you can do things. Let's go, guys. Come on. Pesticides. Come on. Let's go. Inside. Come on, bear. Let's go. Come on, bear. Catch a squid. Come on, buddy. Atta boy. <sighs> Kitty, get back in the house. All right, I, I definitely got to cut this short. We'll finish up on the computer later. And do an update with some nice new representations of what's going on at the Galactic Core. The diner at the Galactic Core. Ciao.